He was named the Sly Fox, a nickname generated after several years of eluding assassins. It was on these streets of Munich in Germany's Bavarian region that this controversial Ukrainian figure used to walk, but that was until the 15th of October 1959. Nationalist and independence leader Stepan Bandera was poisoned by cyanide gas outside his house. A KGB defector called Bogdan Stashinsky threw the toxic concoction, a murder ordered by the Soviet government. That, at least, according to German investigators. This week marks 56 years since his death. And with the annexation of Crimea, war in eastern Ukraine and EU sanctions on Russia, the legacy of Bandera has now reappeared after being buried for half a century. He is a polarizing figure way beyond the borders of his homeland. Here in Munich, his grave has been vandalized several times over the past few years, doused with paint, the marble cross torn down. Police continue to look for the vandals. A police representative said the case was handed over to prosecutors. Stepan Bandera was a famous Ukrainian freedom fighter and, of course, we consider political motives. Therefore, the investigation is also led by the public security services in Germany. Ukrainian nationalists idolized Stepan Bandera's actions during World War II whilst looking towards the new threat in the east, Moscow. But particularly in Russia and eastern Ukraine, he is viewed as a Nazi collaborator, a terrorist, his followers accused of committing atrocities against ethnic Poles and Jews. But how did Bandera get to Munich? Well, post-World War II, the city became the center of Ukrainian migrants, many former prisoners of war who had no desire to return to the Soviet Union or stay in refugee centers in Germany or Austria. Historian Dmitro Slepko. There were three KGB structures. The first was from Vienna, where he was under surveillance. They even managed to track his son from school, and through his son they wanted to find his family, because his surname was no longer Bandera, but Popol. At Bandera's grave in Munich's Waldfriedhof Cemetery, flowers are maintained with water from the Black Sea and soil from Ukraine. Despite attacks, his family insists the nationalist leader's resting place remains there. Neither the organization of Ukrainian nationalists nor the family agree that the remains be transferred back to Ukraine because of the dangers there. Even in the village where Stepan Bandera was born, a monument to him was blown up twice, so there would be danger. Therefore, it is better to leave them in Munich. Russian propaganda jumped on Bandera's partisan actions to justify early uprisings and its intervention in eastern Ukraine in 2014, a move Moscow claimed was needed to protect peaceful ethnic Russian speakers in Donbass from extermination, comparing those efforts to Stalin in World War II. But even as Vladimir Putin winds down his military intervention in Donbass, the Kremlin's actions have left far-reaching consequences. A more independent, united Ukraine, perhaps the real dream of Bandera all those years ago.